Arrested with a loaded handgun. It was Friday night. Victoria Police removed a handgun from a well-known offender in the 400 block of Gorge Road East. So at approximately 9.30 p.m., the emergency response team arrested the man who was reported to be carrying the handgun. The 42-year-old Victoria man was arrested with a 9mm handgun that was tucked inside his waistband. The gun was loaded with six rounds in the magazine, and the restricted firearm had its serial number erased and was modified so it could accommodate more ammunition. He is now facing nine gun-related charges and remained in custody over the week. He is due in court later this afternoon. The police targeted the man after receiving information that he might be in possession of the gun. Now, if you don't remember, this is the second handgun we've recovered in as many weeks. Now, we are seeing a few more guns on the street, but fortunately not being used in crimes. And we are making arrests, which is good to see in all these cases, and getting the guns off the street. Was the other gun also one that had an erased serial number, like the previous weapon? Not this one, no. Do you have an age on this gun? Uh, 42 year old Victorian man. And how is he known to police? He is known for property related offenses. And this was a tip that came sort of at night? Uh, this was Friday night. And he's been in custody since then? Yes. He He'll appear today. Yeah. Nine, nine handgun related charges. Nine yes. Weapons. Why nine? It's various charges around the firearm being restricted, modified, serial numbers. There's all different sorts of charges that go along with that. So, what other modification was there? As far as I know, it was just modified so it could accommodate more ammunition. Um, will, will police ask, or do you know what the Crown will ask to have this man stay in custody? I don't know what uh, Crown's plans are. He's appearing in court today? Yes, later today. And is there any follow-up now with the firearm to see if it's connected or related to any other crimes in the province? Certainly. Our officers are going to be looking at that, trying to identify the firearm through uh, any sort of identification. As I said, the serial number has been filed off, so we'll be working through that and seeing if we can't uh, place it to an owner, possibly. Maybe it was stolen in a break in or something like that. So we'll be trying to find that out. So there's a possibility that this gun came into this person's hands by a, um, either some kind of a criminal network or that it was literally stolen and then, you know, erased from there. We're not sure of the history on it, so our officers are certainly going to be digging into that and trying to trace that back and find out where it did come from. Do you have any knowledge or that he was, or was there a suspicion that he was about to commit some kind of a crime? No, we don't have any knowledge, no information to suggest that, just that he was in possession of it. And you, sorry, one final, you might not know this off the top of your head, did he have any firearm prohibitions from previous? That I don't know. Oh, he did? He did have a firearm prohibition previous. Can you integrate that to a very short 15 seconds? <laughs> Why, I, I sure can. The man we arrested was a subject of a firearm prohibition, uh, so we'll be facing that, uh, that charge as well. All right. Next up, we had a registered sex offender who was arrested for an indecent act. A man who's registered as a national sex offender was arrested Sunday for an indecent act. The 27-year-old man was arrested after masturbating along the West Song walkway. Police were called after he approached a female jogger on the popular footpath that connects Vic West and Esquimalt. Several officers arrived immediately and began searching the walkway. They located the man matching the description that was provided on the footbridge near Bernard Park. He was arrested without incident at that time, and a query revealed that the man had a history of indecent acts in other cities, and also was found to be in breach of a probation order. At that time, he was identified and released, as the investigation does continue now. Now, we are particularly concerned for the offense, given the man's history and the location. Uh, yesterday, the walkway was busy with lots of people, including young families who were enjoying the nice, unseasonable, warm fall weather. So if anyone did witness the offense late on Sunday afternoon, they are asked to contact police and hopefully we can get a statement from them. So is he in custody? No, he's not. Um, and does he have a court date? No. No, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't arrested at the time. He was identified and the investigation does continue now. If he's in breach of probation, why was he dissolved? Not in breach of probation. Oh, I'm sorry. He's just on the, the sex offender registry. 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry I misunderstood you. Wait, so he wasn't arrested? So. No, he was identified at the time. And the investigation continues now. We're looking for more witnesses who may have possibly seen this. Just to give our officers more information and lay a formal charge. Well, how difficult do you think it will be? This woman had a description. She's a probably an upstanding person. This guy actually is a sex offender. Like, how much evidence do you need? Well, certainly the more we get, the better, right? That's what we're, gonna, we're looking for, is people to help corroborate it. It's not that we don't believe, but we always measure everything in a balance of probabilities, right? And we have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this is what occurred. So with more people or multiple complainants, then we can do that much better. Um, and you said he's from a different place? He's not from... Uh, he's not originally from here. I don't know where he is from. Or how long he's been here. Um, are police looking at, you know, there were some similar kind of things going on at bus stops and things like that recently? Yeah, earlier in the spring there? No, we certainly have forwarded all the information off to the uh, detective who's in charge of the series of indecent acts that we had in the spring. So he'll be looking at those as well. Sir, you said late yesterday. Can you be more specific in case there were people in the area? Uh, do we call the time on that, Mike? 2.30. 2.30? Um, the best song way. So is that the, like, the opposite side where the condos are? Yeah. Okay. All right. Next one we have was a stabbing that occurred at 760 Queens Avenue. So a 43-year-old man was arrested following a stabbing that took place Friday at 760 Queens Avenue. Darcy Corey, K-O-R-Y, was arrested within minutes after the incident occurring on a second floor hallway. Corey stabbed one man in the arm and assaulted another man after a fight outside his suite. The incident stemmed from a noise complaint, and the accused fought the two men, including an on-site security guard. At one point, the accused ran back in his suite to retrieve a kitchen knife. He stabbed the victim in the arm before the two... Sorry, he stabbed the victim in the arm before the two victims managed to flee the area. Corey was arrested within minutes of the stabbing and was facing charges of assault with a weapon and assault. He appeared in court later that day and is due to make a second court appearance on October 31st. Is he in custody? He has been kept in custody, yes. Was he the complainer or the complainant about the noise? Like, how did he I the noise? don't recall if he was the one being. I think it was a noise complaint coming from his suite. Okay. You, you said, said he's in custody? custody. Yes. A noise complaint coming from? From his suite. Stabbers? Yeah. Does he have a record? Yes. And this, on the Queen, Queen Street, is that the traveler van? That is. That's the, not the one right on Douglas. The one right on Douglas is 710. Right. The one behind that is 760. And that's oh, where yes, this was. Going up, going, up. going up Queen Street, yeah. Okay, so is that the one that's now being administered by Cooley? No, that's 710 that's administered by Cooley. Okay, so 760 is, is the one behind. Now, has this location, how many other stabbings or incidents has there been at this location? You know, we've been to a fair amount of serious calls of this. Uh, I think it was six months ago that there was a serious stabbing there. And since the beginning of the year, we've been to over 100 calls at that, that location. What could police use to help them in, in you know, dealing with all of these calls? What can the hotel owner do? Who are you looking to? to I mean, there was one security guard mm -hmm. today, but you know, obviously not enough. Well, I think the issue for us, Elise, is that we get support from the people who work at the location. So there's two staff members who basically manage that whole, whole, whole hotel. They're not getting the support that they need from behind that, from management, from the owners. You look at 710, they're on the same block, and we have Kool-Aid who staffs it. They support the police, and we support Kool-Aid and helping. Uh, we're able to get a lot of help for people who have mental health or addictions issues who are in there. None of that is present at 760. So I know we've tried very hard to liaise with the owner, but it, it hasn't come to fruition yet. What's the building formerly known as? Traveler's Inn. It's one of the Traveler's Inns. I'm not sure the owner's name. All right, and the last one I have for today. Vic PD officers are being credited with saving a man's life late yesterday afternoon after deploying a taser during a tent standoff. Our officers responded to a 911 call yesterday in an apartment in the 1200 block of North Park Avenue. When the officers entered the suite, they encountered a man in a small suite where he was slashing himself with a large kitchen knife. 
Unable to talk to the man, talk the man into dropping the knife, the situation escalated when he motioned the knife towards his throat. At that time, officers deployed the conducted energy weapon, which momentarily stopped the man. He dropped the knife and was taken into custody. Our officers rendered emergency medical treatment to the man for his injuries, and paramedics were soon on scene. The 46-year-old Victorian man was transported to hospital for his injuries and assessment under the Mental Health Act. I don't know if he's still in the hospital or not. Did he have a history of police in terms of doing this before? Or? He does have a history of police, yes. And how serious were the injuries? They were fairly, ser fairly serious injuries that he had uh, inflicted on himself, so we're really happy that our officers got there in time. And Does that mean he cut him. his throat? No, he did not cut his throat, no. Did he start slashing himself when police arrived, or had that happened prior to your arrival? I believe it was when we arrived. Okay, so was there anything, any indication he wanted police to intercede somehow? You know, I think it was a cry for help when we got there. I, you know, he's at that point and is just trying to make something of it, right? We got in and, and the call was originally to the ambulance, but especially if you're mentioning that you have a large knife, obviously the police are going to come. And so it was certainly quick thinking on our officer's part. What was the address again? It was in the 1200 block of North Park. So did he call an ambulance for help? Or an ambulance? He did call the ambulance initially for help, yeah. He did? Yes. How tough a shock was it for the chief? Boy, well, you can imagine they're in a small room in a small apartment. It was very cramped. So, thankfully, that the officers were there. They had that, uh, you know, that non-lethal weapon available to them, right? And he made a good shot. Yes. I used once. Just once, yes. And sorry, uh, time. Yeah. Uh, that was. I'm trying to remember. About two thirty. No, I was ye yeah yesterday. I don't have that. PM. PM. Yeah, yeah. it's in the afternoon. Okay. I don't have an exact time. Sorry. All right, that's all I have for today. Yeah, it was a busy weekend. What about the Occupy site? It seems to have grown. Is it causing any problems or? No, it certainly does seem to have grown. You know, we started off on October 15th, there was about 25 tents. Yeah. Last count we had was around 70 now. Yeah. Uh, so still remains a peaceful protest, uh, which, is, which is good. We're really happy to see that. We are in constant dialogue. We have officers assigned that go down there as well to liaise with them. Uh, we're really trying to figure out, uh, you know, their plans or how long are they planning on staying? What exactly is it that they're asking for in Victoria? Uh, you know, is it the global message or do they have specifics here that they're looking for as well? So we're certainly looking towards all that and just trying to make sure we find a peaceful end or, or just facilitate the peaceful process. Under what conditions would police get involved? Uh, would it be from the city, a direction from the city, or who? What, what, what do you wait for in terms of taking action? Well, we certainly liaise with the city. Um, at the end of the day, we're responsible for the safety of everybody there. So if mm -hmm. something did occur where, uh, you know, something was happening where it was putting people's safety in jeopardy, we'd certainly intervene. Mm -hmm. But as far as an end game or, or something when, you know, this is a finality, it's going to be certainly us liaising with the city uh, and finding out when that time would be. Are we seeing um, a demographic shift on, on who's down there? I know just third hand that uh, maybe them giving out free food, having a place to clean up and the rest of it, are bringing in people who are not necessarily legitimate protesters, but are area street people. You know, Jenna, there's all different sorts of signs down there as well. You know, you have no chemtrails, you have all different sorts of things. So the messaging is, is different. Uh, you look at the protest that took place on the 15th. There was families with kids. There was all different sorts of demographics, old to young. And here it seems to be the, you know, the early 20s uh, and they're out camping. So there's not a lot of, uh, of you know, dimensions to it like there was on the 15th. So, you know, I certainly think that speaks to what you're saying, is a, it is a shift there. Can I just ask about the indecent exposure guy? Uh, mm -hmm. Was this victim, or was this alleged victim, a nation woman? I don't know. Just no. because the height of no. the was not. guy was. Yeah. How about the serial uh, robber? I mean, have charges been laid, or what's going on? We're expecting charges are going to be forthcoming against the serial robber sometime today or early tomorrow. He's still in custody on unrelated warrants, 
and our officers are working hard to put those charges through for the new stuff. So when he was arrested last Wednesday, it was on unrelated warrants? It was, yes. And so it wasn't there? Okay. Yeah. And then what, what led police to believe that perhaps this might be the person responsible for these? Well, originally at the time of the stop, the original stop, our officer suspected that he had some matching descriptors of the serial robber. So certainly good work on our patrol officers, patrol sergeant, and, uh, you know, match the description. So then he was taken into custody when it found out that the warrants were what it was, uh, was for, and that's where we're at right now. No, but no weapons found on him at that time? No, no weapons found on him at that time. Do you know whether um, do you know whether the like last week when you had the news conference and had the chief out there talking about the final situation? Do you know whether uh, the police department has been able to make any presentations yet to the attorney, uh, solicitor general about the questions that they're asking? What do you do? You mean the adjudicator that was coming yeah. in, the mediator to help? Or? Yes, yes. I'm yes. not sure if we've had any meetings. No, no meetings. No. Uh, just along, along those lines, um, I know at the time Mayor Fortin was saying that he wants to release Victoria's bid and that that would be forthcoming. Do we have any timeline on when we expect to see that coming out of the department or the city? Well, ultimately it is the city's bid, so it's the city's going to be handling that. So I can't really comment on timelines. I don't actually know what the timelines are for that. So.